If my grandmother had the wheels, she'd have been a bike. So I was shopping in Asda when something caught my eye. And if you hadn't guessed by that awesome impersonation, it was Gino De Campo. He had a whole line of Italian food, which I've not tried. So that's what we're gonna do today. We got pizza, we got pasta. Is it a cash grab by a celebrity chef? Will the food make Nonna proud? Not my Nonna. I ain't got a nonna. Anyway, a full range. I'm not sure how new it is, but to start, we have the pizza here. Gino Di Campo ham and mushroom pizza. Sourdough pizza, tomato sauce, mushrooms, mozzarella cheese, and ham. And to go alongside, we've got the ultimate pasta bake. It is the macaroni cheese. Look at, look at Gino there. He's so happy, isn't he? Look how happy he is. Ooh. It does say approved by Gino. It doesn't say made by him. He's not there. They've not got him in the factory just slaving, making these meals. He's coming. He's probably just gone, this is a good. Or, you know, maybe gave a recipe. I'm not 100% sure approved by. Oh, on the back, actually, it says, it's got a little blurb. My son Rocco doesn't really like milk. So when making macaroni cheese, I feel like I've got to do the accent, should I? My son Rocco doesn't really like milk. So when making macaroni cheese, eh, I add in as many different cheeses as possible instead. That's not it, that, okay. The result, a fantastic rich sauce loved by the whole family. When I'm at home, you will often find me in the kitchen creating my favorite Italian meals many of which are featured in my cookbooks and television shows. But here's the secret. I often freeze them down. Here we go. This is the important bit. Based on some recipes, ingredients, and methods, I am proud to have created a range of classic meals inspired by Italy for you to enjoy at home just like his family. So it is Gino's recipe, and he does approve. He grew up in Naples, the birthplace of the iconic pizza, as a young boy, he learned the art of making pizza from his nonna Flora, his grandmother. So I cook from frozen 13 to 14 minutes on the pizza in the oven. The macaroni cheese, 30 minutes in the oven or 10 or 11 minutes. So roughly the same time, 10 or 11 minutes in the microwave. Oh, interesting. You see the little buffalo balls? Looks pretty good. It says we've got to remove the plastic, not pierce it. So... That is the mac and cheese. And there's the pizza. I'm gonna whack this in the oven and I'll see you when the food is um, cooked in about 15 minutes. We'll start with the macaroni cheese first and I did decanto the mac and cheese into a bowl. Sorry. So here we have it. It looks all right, pretty cheesy, if not a little dry around the edges, but that's probably because of the microwave, three pounds 50 for the mac and cheese, 380 grams worth. Now the pizza, and yes, I'm picking it up with my hands and I'm burning myself. The pizza also three pounds 50. The mozzarella balls are nice and spread, evenly distributed, nice color. Undercarriage is crisp. I like my pizza to be more on the overdone than underdone side, so this one is looking pretty good. Bird's eye view now, there is the mac and cheese. You know, it doesn't look that pretty once you decant it and put it into a bowl, it, you know, it never looks the same, but we'll uh, reserve judgment for the taste. And there is the pizza, nice color, a few mushrooms, ham looking good, big pile of ham there, mozzarella, like I said, evenly distributed. Try the tomato sauce in a moment around the edge. Looks, looks good, rustic is the word. Okay, we're gonna start with the macaroni cheese. Absolutely steaming, as you can see in the middle. That's interesting taste. Okay. I'm a big fan of macaroni and cheese and I've tried a load of the stuff. I make a really good mac and cheese also. I've tried a load of store-bought packet mixes, frozen. 
it's definitely rich in flavor. I will say the pasta has held itself. It's not mushy, even in the center. It's got some body to it. I like that. I can get a small hint of Parmesan cheese. I can taste some mozzarella, a bit of cheddar. So from my guess, there's three different cheeses in there. A bit of Parmesan, mozzarella, cheddar. And there's a real salty taste coming through as well. Not in a bad way salty, but yeah, that is the overwhelming taste in my mouth. With the creamy cheese, you get salt. You can tell a lot more thought has gone into that recipe. It doesn't taste like a generic frozen mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit different to a usual bog standard budget mac and cheese. Well, let's be honest, this isn't budget. I'm not sure the cheese sauce really works that well frozen down. It's a little bit lumpy. You know what, I like it. And at the same time, I could never have it again and I wouldn't be bothered. A different taste for a mac and cheese. Yeah, that saltiness coming through. What is it? Poultry meat juice and fat and salt. Seven out of 10. Okay, I'm just gonna cut the pizza. Hear that crunch. Wow. I do like a, a crunchy edge. I cut myself off a quarter and that is what we've got. We've got a massive mouthful of ham. The thing when you're topping with just mozzarella, which this is, is the coverage. You're gonna to struggle to cover it completely with cheese. It's got a nice crisp to it, just like the crust. Here we go, let's try the tomato sauce. I'm expecting a rich, flavoursome tomato sauce. Exactly what I got. The sourdough is excellent. So frozen pizzas, you can pay what you want for them. Less than a pound. Or you can get the brand leaders over in the UK. It's like Chicago Town stuffed crust takeaway style pizzas. And they can be five pounds plus. Or you can get your supermarkets finest or best, which again can be five pounds plus. This was £3.50, and I'll be honest, it's pretty damn good. I've been to pizza restaurants, local ones like Pizza Express, Pizza Hut, but Pizza Express in particular. The last time I went, you're paying nearly £20 for a pizza. That was one of the worst I've ever had. This beats it by far. The sauce is rich. The right amount of herbs, mmm. The tangy hit of tomato is perfect, but not overly so. I love a crispy crust and dip that in some mayo, garlic mayo, truffle mayo. Want a bite? As far as a frozen pizza goes, it's not soggy. Flavors are all at the higher end. It's an easy eight out of 10. I'm not gonna lie, the mac and cheese on the pizza slaps. Let me tell you something about pizza. If you have a good crust, it doesn't need to be stuffed. I use somebody that leaves the crust, eat all the topping and just leave the crust to the side. Is that you? I'm just happy it wasn't crap because I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be. I think we've covered everything there. Please leave a comment down below if there's any other foods you'd like me to try at home. It's all good and well going and eating at different restaurants and places like that, but I could do more reviews when I'm at home. So leave a comment down below, anything you'd like me to try that you might see on the shelves, maybe that I could import. Leave a comment, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching. Gino, good job, I've got half a pizza to eat. I'll see you in the next one, peace.